Hi, I'm Bob Rice, and today we're going to talk about PI control with a focus on the I part, the integral part of PI control. So let's start with the equation, right? So with a PI controller, we have a controller output. It's equal to the bias value plus the proportional part, the P only part of it, which is going to be your controller gain times your error. Now we introduce the integral portion, right? This is going to be KC over reset time times the integral times E of T dt, all right? This is a PI equation. Now, this is also what's known as a dependent form of the PI equation. This is going to be the form of the equation that I'm going to use most frequently in this video series. What makes it dependent is that the controller gain is actually distributed across both the proportional and the integral portions, right? This is a dependent form. The controller gain is distributed. In this particular example, the dependent form uses also what's called a reset time, which is the value located here in the denominator, okay? If I make this reset time smaller, it'll effectively make this weighting factor larger and give the controller more integral action. So in this form, the dependent form of the equation the reset time is in the denominator, a smaller value gives it more integral action. So let's take a look at what the integral action does. So again, we're gonna start with a very simple example. We're gonna make a set point change on a process, and we're actually going to remove the proportional term, right? We're gonna get rid of this. And we're gonna look at just what the integral is going to do to this, right? So this is an I only controller, just so we can see the influence of what the integral term does, right? So again, we have some sort of process variable and we have a controller output that starts at some value, okay? And then right when we make that set point change, right, we introduce error into the system. Now, whereas a P only controller would see a big step in error because it's looking at whatever the error is at this moment, the integral is an accumulation of error. And so it's actually summing up the area in between the process variable and the set point. So it actually starts very small. And then as the process variable starts to collect that error, the integral will accumulate that, right? And it's gonna accumulate, and it'll slowly push the process variable up because we're accumulating. Now, notice I'm getting smaller and smaller amounts of error and so the amount accumulating becomes smaller and smaller, right? And eventually I'm going to actually probably cross over, right? Because this in integral is accumulating and going and going and going, it'll eventually slow down. But if I actually accumulate too much, it's gonna overshoot and it'll kind of ramp back down again. And it'll come back down and it'll probably do something, you know, maybe along the lines of that, right? just as an example, right? Obviously the value of the reset time will change how much it ramps. If I give my controller more integral action, which is a smaller reset time, you'll find that you'll accumulate your ramp that error a lot quicker, right? If you ramp this error a lot quicker, you're gonna find your process variable is gonna move quicker, but odds are you're gonna overshoot more, right? And so you may end up with something that looks like this. If you don't integrate enough, you're gonna find that the integral will accumulate very, very slowly, and the process variable may not do much at all, okay? So the integral action is an accumulation of error. It builds based off of how much error you've accumulated over time. Now, how do you add this to the proportional term, all right? So if you remember from the last web series, we had a set point change, and we had a process variable that kind of responded like this, right, for a flow loop, and the controller output contribution of the P only part was something like it started here, and then it got large, and then it kind of dropped back down again, right? So this is your proportional contribution in here, right? The integral is going to accumulate onto this, right? And so if this is the proportional contribution, the integral contribution is gonna be something like this. It's gonna accumulate and then it's gonna kind of stop accumulating. And what you put those two terms together and what you are allowing it to do is having that controller output go up and then steady at a new value 
And instead of your process variable having an offset, because this error exists, that error is actually driving your integral to keep moving. And it's going to move that process variable to get up to the set point. So the integral removes the offset that was caused from a P-only controller. All right, The integral is accumulating. It's building up its momentum. It's going to continue to accumulate as long as there's error. If there's error, that means your process variable is not at your set point, And you're going to get a little bit of contribution to your integral to keep accumulating to it. Now, if you have too much integral, you tend to accumulate too quickly and you start to introduce instability and overshoot in your processes, right? If you have too much integral action, right, you're going to accumulate too much and you're going to cause overshoot and oscillations. Too little integral action and you're going to end up with a process that dies before it gets to the set point and it takes forever for it to get that last little bit because it's not accumulating that error. It's not shifting that controller output enough, right? So if you see a controller that changes quickly and then dies before it gets there, not enough integral. If you see a controller that just carries on and has lots of oscillations and waves, could be too much integral, could be too much proportional. That can also cause overshoot and oscillations, right? So there's a little bit of a give and a take with a PI controller. Yes, you get rid of the overshoot, but the integral action does increase the likelihood that your process will start to oscillate. All right? So proportional and integral, you add those together, you get the PI controller, which is the most common form of the PID equation. Okay? Proportional and integral. In this web series, we reviewed a little bit of the impact of the integral tuning parameter on the shape of the controller output and what the integral action does to the PI controller to be able to get rid of the offset. Thank you for joining me.